The final thing Greg wants to do is retrace his steps to North Wales, where he hopes to find out more about his Owen family roots. So I'm on the road towards Cwm Mawr, probably pronounced badly, um, which is the farm that we know Evan was living in when he got married. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of farm it is. He's come to the hills of Snowdonia to visit the Owen family farm, where he knows Evan lived as a young man. The view is amazing. Yeah, that is an incredible view. There it is. Greg is meeting another of his Owen relations, Alwena Lamping. Hello, Alwena. Hello, Greg. How nice to meet you. Yes, lovely to meet you too. I understand we have a shared heritage. Well, shared ancestry in Evan Owen, I think. Yes, yes. certainly, yes. I am Evan Owen's great, great grandson. I'm his great granddaughter. Are you? I am. <laughs> right. This is where he grew up then. I can trace back the family to this farm since about 1660. Really? Yep. So little wow. Evan in the 1850s with his brothers and sisters would have run around here. That's incredible. I had yes. no idea that there were generations before him even at this farmhouse. Absolutely. I have got a photograph oh, of, well, of him and his wife, and I think it's the four daughters here. There's can I take it one. out? You can indeed. That is an incredible photograph. You see, there's the man himself. Yes. There's Evan Owen. There's his wife. Mm -hmm. She's called Martha. Yeah. This is my grandmother, Matty. This is clearly yes. the Sunday best, isn't it? Yes. Is that a Bible so. he's got there? Yes. Of course. Yes. What of else? It is. What else? The impression I formed of Evan is that he was a very upright and respected member of the, of the community and a, a chapel man, or as my nine would say, he was chapel. But I haven't really formed an impression of the man outside of that. One of the obituaries, one of the tributes to him was from this, the Herald Gymraeg. After the awful after the incident. After the accident, yeah. yes. I do have a transcription of it here right. in English. Mr Evan Owen had lived for many years in... Tally Lin. He was a very intelligent man, a great theologian, with extensive knowledge of the scriptures. He could talk skillfully of both religious and national matters. He also had a certain mischievous or comic talent, which showed when he was with his closest friends, and he was a very sociable man. Mm -hmm. That's great to know. Mischievous comic talent. That is not a that is not a phrase that I would attribute to that face. No. But my nine had a wicked sense of humour and was yeah. extremely mischievous. And my father was a wonderful show-off. Yeah. Right. And a very funny man. So it was there? It was, yeah, it was there. Through her research, Alwena has discovered that at least eight generations of the Owen family farmed at Cwm Mawr. So is this farm still in the Owen family? No, it isn't. Evan Owen's brother was the last one to farm this land. The actual land belonged to one of the big estates and was sold in 1897. I see. Which was actually detailed in Gwalia. And there's quite interesting information about the family yeah. in it, which I've got a translation here for you. OK. At the recent farm stock sales in the Ivionith area, we were surprised to see that the last of the old lineage of the Cum Maur family was leaving. We find that the current family and their ancestors had lived there for at least 200 years. The Owens who lived there were descended from Owen... Gwyneth. Gwyneth. Do you know who Owen Gwyneth is? I don't. Right. He was king of Gwyneth in the 12th century. He was king of the, this area? King of the whole of this part of North Wales in the 12th century. And he was the first Prince of Wales. He was the first to be styled Prince of Wales. Are you saying we're descended from the first Prince of Wales? I am, yes. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew yes. it. I knew I had royal blood. But 
This is a long time ago. This is the 12th century. And Owen Gwynedd had a lot of children. I mean a lot of children. So if you think of the descendants coming back from the 12th century, there, he did have a lot of descendants. He had, some reports I'm say, sure he 19 did, but children. I'm sure he had a, an awful lot of children. Yes. And I'm sure there are many, many descendants. But all I'm hearing is... Yeah that I'm descended from the original Prince of Wales. Yes. And that's all I'm going to hear, I'll be honest with you. That's fine. And this, of course, was Gwyneth, which is what he was king of. Look behind you, look all of that. It's not a bad landscape to be king of. No, it's not, is it? If I've read you correctly, mm. I rule this. <laughs> Owen Gwyneth became ruler of Gwyneth in 1137 and afterwards conquered most of North Wales. In 1165, he triumphed over the English king, Henry II, who had invaded his kingdom, and afterwards took the title Prince of Wales. I've been led to believe that there is an outside chance that I may not be the only person who's descended from Owain Gwyneth. So I'm heading to an appropriately named pub Hello. I'm looking for people who might be related to Owain Gwyneth. Yes. All of you? Yes. yes. Right. <laughs> Let me guess. You're all descended from Owen the Great. Yes! Hands up who's got proof of that? Yes. All of them. How many of you are descended from Owain Gwyneth? Yes. You all are? Yes. And you've all got proof? Yes. 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 How many of you are descended from Owain Gwyneth? Including our little friend there as well. Is there anyone in this part of the world that isn't descended from Owain Gwyneth? Not many. Not many? <laughs> People at home can be very upset by this. They thought they found their new leader. The North Walians thought their leader had come home. And now I find out they're all the Prince of Wales, even the women. Quite an overwhelming journey. There's a lot to think about. I've never really considered the significance of extended family before because we as a family were quite a tight unit and uh, obviously I knew my grandparents but, but didn't really consider the influence of those further back. And that's one thing that I'm left in, in no doubt of is that the people who've gone before you shape who you become to a degree. And I haven't really worked out to what extent, but I've felt it for the first time ever, really. So much of this has been, for me, about fathers and sons and the relationship of fathers and sons and the importance of that. And I think my father would be uh, both delighted and annoyed <laughs> that I have at last taken an interest in his family and the roots that were so dear to him. And I will come back here and I will find out more. And, uh, and I'm only sorry I didn't do it sooner. <laughs>